video for the Cozy Moments shawl. My name is Karen and I'm the designer behind New Leaf Designs. In this tutorial video, I'm going to be showing you how to do lace section 8, which is this lace section right here. It looks kind of like four leaf clover right there. And it's really easy, you just make it across four rows. Um, and I'm gonna continue knitting on my little swatch here um, with Scapia's Soft Fun. And we have just done a couple of garter rows. We have knit five rows and then purled one row. So you have two garter ridges. And now we are going to be doing the clover lace section. Now it's really easy. Um, it's just knit stitches, yarn overs, and the central double decrease um, that we have been doing before. Um, and I don't mean the one with the extra ridge on top, but the regular one that we have been knitting before that. And I'm going to take you through all of the rows. Now a short note. If you are using Scapius Whirly Gig and you don't have an additional ball of Whirly Gig yet, you might want to calculate already how many rows you can do. So um, you want to measure your yarn, so weigh your yarn before and after each row so you'll know how much grams of yarn you're using. For my whirly gig I used three grams for a knit row and four grams for a purl row so an average of 3.5 grams um, and then you can weigh how many how much yarn you have left and how many rows there are left in the pattern so then you can you can uh, calculate how many rows you can still knit. Now for the bind off I used 5 grams and for the crochet edging I used 14 grams. This is all in the pattern so be sure to use this information to calculate whether you can finish with your whirly gig. If you're using a whirl you're probably out of the danger zone. You, you can probably just finish with yarn to spare. Uh, you can, however, look at lace patterns you want to insert if you have a lot of yarn left. Uh, please just uh, post in the Escapees Facebook groups and we'll be there to help you. Um, but in any case, you will need to weigh how much yarn you are using per row because otherwise we can't really help you without that information. So I just wanted to say that up front. Um, so let's get started with row one. So we are at row one of lace section eight, which is pattern H. And this is actually the same row as row three. So this is actually the only lace row that we'll be repeating. The pattern starts with knit two, then yarn over, and the double decrease that we have knit in the beginning of the pattern, and that is slip one, knit two together, and pass that slip stitch over. So don't get it confused with the double decrease that we have done in the previous lace chart because this one is different. Then yarn over and knit three. That is the end of one repeat. I'm going to show you once more in throwing style. So we knit two yarn over, slip one, knit two together, and pass that slipped stitch, oops, pass it over, yarn over, and knit three. I'm just going to knit it one more time, so I'm at the end of my um, swatch, so I'm going to knit two, yarn over, slip one, knit two together, and pass the slipped stitch over. 
yarn over and knit three. And now I am at my marker. So I'm slipping the marker and knitting the last four stitches. There. On the wrong side row, you'll see it in the chart. Um, you need to purl every stitch. The chart shows white boxes, which means knit stitches on the right side and purl stitches on the wrong side. So we are purling all of these stitches. until we get to the marker, slip marker, and then knit four. And then we are at row three, which is exactly the same as row one. I'm gonna show you anyway. So knit four, and then Again, we start with knit two. And now we're going to be building our decrease over the stitches that we have knit before. So yarn over, slip one, knit two together, and pass that slip stitch over. Yarn over, knit three. And you can see that our first four leaf clover has appeared here. Then once more in throwing style, knit two. Oops. Oh, okay. This is a good opportunity to show you. I just dropped a stitch. Luckily it was on top of a yarn over. So, and that means it cannot drop any further. I'm just going to grab a crochet hook and show you how to fix this. So this is a yarn over which you can just pick up. It's uh, important to pick up the second uh, bar because the one above that is the purl stitch from the row that we just did. So we pick up the yarn over and that purl stitch looks like a knit stitch on this side. So we need to recreate a knit stitch. And we do that just by doing that. So I'm going to show you again. I've picked up the yarn over. I'm going over that loop and taking it underneath like this. Then I'm pulling this up and putting it on the needle. And that is how you pick up a stitch. So that was uh, unplanned, but I'm glad that it happened. Um, so we've just knit our two stitches and I'm doing my yarn over and then slip one, knit two together and pass that slip stitch over Then yarn over and knit three. And that is the repeat for the clover lace, as I call it. So go ahead and finish row three, finish row four, and then you will see the full pattern. So that was our pattern eight, or pattern H, the eighth lace pattern, which I call clover lace. As it looks like a four leaf clover. So it's a really quick lace repeat. Um, and 
are really fun as well. And after this you're gonna knit a bunch of garter rows and now please note that for whirly gig you're only knitting half of those rows. So for the whirl version we knit eight rows and then you will see four garter ridges. For whirly gig you will only knit four rows and you will see two garter ridges. And I can show you uh, the sample that I am wearing right now. I mean these garter ridges. And I really like garter at the edge of a shawl because garter stitch is really heavy. And at the edge of a shawl it really helps to drape the shawl really nicely. And after those garter ridges we will do the crochet edging. Now this is totally optional. So if you're not a fan of crochet or you simply don't like the border, then you can choose to not do it. But I'm going to show you in the next video how to do this. Regarding the bind off, because first we bind off and then we do the crochet edging. The bind off, um, I just used the regular bind off. So you knit two stitches and you pass the first stitch over the second stitch. I do that really loosely. So, uh, so I get a really nice loose edge. Uh, you might want to use a different method. You can, um, uh, what's it called? Surpri Genie's Surprisingly Stretchy Bind Off uh, that uses knit two togethers um, and that stitch uses more yarn so you can uh, and more yarn equals more stretchiness so you can do that as well. If you're not sure if your bind off is going to be stretchy enough just put in a lifeline before you bind off then you can test how stretchy your bind off is and then you can choose whether to rip back and do a stretchier bind off or rip back and do a regular bind off or not rip back at all uh, ideally um, yeah so that's what you can try so I'm gonna show you how to do the crochet edging in the next video um, I hope you enjoyed this video and please do show us your shawl versions with the hashtags Cozy Moments Shawl and hashtag Val Mal. And you can do so in the Scapius Facebook groups or on Instagram. And on Instagram you can tag me as well. I'm at newbeliefdesigns.nl and you can also tag Scapius. Thank you so much for knitting along with us and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye bye!